All right, you guys asked for it and you shall receive. I'm back at Jim Kovaleski's house and we're making you a soil block video today. Hold tight. There's the man. Hey, Pete. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. You look in good spirits today. I am, it's time to plant some more plants. Are you ready? I'm running out of crop. <laughs> I'm ready, yeah. Let's go make some soil blocks. I don't think I've ever seen this place so uh, lush and just abundant. Yeah, it's looking good. Um, yeah, it's been a good year. The heat is stressing it a little, but it's been an amazingly good crop this year. So I'd like to, I mean, everybody's always asking about the soil block mix. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that here so you can all see how I do it. But I mean, it's in Elliot Coleman's um, soil block mix. You can just Google that. But to actually see how I do it, you can watch. So the, the basic measure, in it, Elliot does it too, is a 10 quart bucket. Okay, so that's pretty much what we're going to use as a measure. Um, so the first thing is, and I used to sift this peat, but I found a good um, variety uh, or whatever, manufacturer or whatever. This one's really good. So there's not a lot of big chunks in it. So that's one, and I usually mix it in a wheelbarrow. So it's two 10 quart buckets of peat. amendments under here so then it's two cups of so this is a two I mean this is a soup can but it ends up being two cups so two cups of azomite a little azomite huh yeah and I usually I don't think I have any here so for people should we point out what what mix are you making for the two inch blocks two inch blocks yeah okay yeah, so it's the next one. So it is a little bit tweaked for the smaller ones. It's a lot less involved. The smaller ones, all it is is peat, compost, a little green sand, and a little clydophosphate. Because um, it's less chunky, because you don't put the sand in. That so, green sand seems to be coming harder and harder to find, yeah, huh? Yeah, I was talking to Wendell. Yeah. I mean, he used to be a dealer. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's far and few and far between. And so this is kind of dusty. So I started because it, you know, I'll see when I blow my nose, if I don't put this on, it gets kind of bad. So you just mix that in. Okay then, um, so I'd always been using the granite sand, but I was having so much problems in the last couple years and I couldn't figure out what it was, so I eliminated certain things to see if it would make a difference. And it turned out, I, we talked about it last time you were here, about the salt in the well. So I probably could go back to the granite, but I started using perlite. So that's what I'm going to do this one because it's been working out pretty good. So there it is. So Coleman uses coarse sand. He doesn't like perlite. He's done it before, but he says it compresses too much in the block. I haven't seen that as a problem. All right, and then so that was two buckets of each peat and perlite. And then there'll be two more buckets of peat, but what I do is usually I put one bucket in and then add the amendments. And then put the extra one on top or the, the fourth one. So now, so where do we go? So more another, now just a cup of azomite. I don't know why he does it this way, but so that's half the can. And then a cup of green sand. And a cup of cross rock phosphate. What do they call it, kaleidophosphate too? So it's just like a powder. Put that in there, and then a little blood meal, another cup of blood meal. In Maine I did this, and it was such a... The skunks love blood meal, so they were eating my soil blocks. It was kind of crazy. Really? Yeah. All right. 
So that's all there is with amendments. And then the fourth bucket of peat. And then mix that up. Definitely a lighter mix with the uh, perlite, but it, I don't know, it seems to be doing good. That, everything I planted this year um, is doing good, is planted in that. All right, so the next thing is Coleman does a bucket of compost. And so <clears throat> this is, so I used to do a managed compost, but what I realized, and, and I didn't have access to it because of the move. So what I started doing is going to some of my better areas in the garden and just, they, you know, using a milk carton and just sift it out a little. And then I sift it finer right here. Oh, you just use one of those trays to sift it? What's that? I actually use a milk carton. Oh, okay. My brother Mark does that. Uh, so. And then this is just a minnow trap. Minnow trap? Yeah. <laughs> Haven't you ever seen them? Yeah. And I used to do this repeat. It used to take a long time, but... And then what I'll do is, these chunkier pieces I'll throw back in my compost pile because I'm trying to get a compost going. Um, so I'll have it for next year. So I save that. So today I'm going to be making about 1,200 soil blocks. Wow. Maybe I won't get them all done today, but between today and tomorrow, because that's how many I've got in the mini blocks out in the front porch. And I've really seen if you can, you know, get it all done in, the, you know, pretty much the same amount of time, uh, not waiting like a week after you get started, then the, you know, the plants are all the same age that way. All right. So we'll call that the one bucket of compost. And then we'll call I pre-mix some. But I gotta get a little bit more. do that like twice or three times and then I pour it into a bin and that also will mix it. And to do that many blocks I'll have to do this three times to get 1200 blocks. I get about 400 out of each. Uh, so that's 400 blocks right yep. there. And then what I do is I pour it in a bin because that will get it mixed up a little more even because a lot of times I wouldn't um, use the whole mix some, well sometimes it wouldn't so just by doing that I'm mixing it again yeah so this is so usually what I do in the I guess to figure water so that is about eight quarts, so I measure it with that. And then depending on how moist the, you know, the garden soil was, it's somewhere between three and four cups of water. And Coleman said he did this like the day before. He thought, um, or he said that the, it took that long for the um, peat moss to absorb the water, but I haven't found that to be the case. And it's more like a feel once you start mixing it. Um, and this is just like one of those mortar mix tubs. I've used it for I don't know how many years. Yeah, so 
this is a little drier, so it might take more because I've got three quarts of water in there so far. And that'll be four. Probably need a little more, but I don't want to add it because if it gets too soupy, it won't block either. What are you doing? Are you using the filtered city water or is that the well water? Filtered city water. Filtered city water. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm going to stay away from the well water with any of the seedling. Just because of the salt intrusion. Yeah, because I think it just concentrates that salt as it evaporates. So this is getting close, but it still doesn't quite flow through my fingers like I like it to. So I'll put another half a quart in. That's getting close. Finished all of that. <coughs> And if it gets too soupy, you just dip in and add more of the block mix. Yeah, that's about right. See how it kind of oozes? It pops out like that. That's about right. All right, and then I'm using the two inch blocker. I've had this one for probably 12 years. That's and the it's two got inch the, with the inserts, yeah. Yeah, it's got the inserts. So it comes with the little nibs for planting seeds. Okay. <coughs> but for the moving up to the three quarter inch mini blocks, you just put these on instead of those. And what I do is I kind of walk it because the edges don't get as compacted. So if you do that and that, then the way the edge, uh, the two outside blocks get compacted. And then put it in here and you lift up. There they are. Oh, so. Dip and clean. Yep, Coleman actually uses warm water. Really? I don't know. Yeah, I haven't seen a need for it because um, they come out all the time pretty good. trying to compress and see how the water kind of oozes out there and then what I'll do is dump that so nice and still almost perfect you gotta squeeze them a little when you put them in did you get two right in the other direction yep oh. So my opinion is that, so if I planted the seeds directly in here, you've got this teeny little seedling coming up, right? And you've got this block that holds a lot of moisture and um, it, the plant doesn't use that much moisture, so I think it stays too wet. Whereas the mini block, you know, it's so little that it gets a pulse of being really wet. I water them maybe twice a day now when we get out there. And so they get a pulse of being dry, a pulse of being wet, a pulse of being dry, so they're getting the air to the roots. Um, the other thing is, this is an elaborate, much more block mix involved in this than the minis. So if I have poor germination, then I didn't waste all these big blocks. So you'll see some of the ones I maybe only got 50% germination, so that way I haven't wasted the big blocks. nice little almost like a greenhouse on the front porch now because during the winter the south sun comes right in so it's great and I, if it gets cold I can protect them if it gets too hot I just open the windows <coughs> Whoa, so those four little trays have 1,200 minis? Yep, so there's wow. well, maybe a little less, so there's um, 280 in each one of these. So what? It, do the math, I don't know. Now how long ago did you start these minis? Um, I'll, I do, I'm pretty um, specific about tagging everything. So I've written, you know, what variety is, where I got it from, 
what year the seed was, and then the date I planted them. So these are planted the 2nd of January. And we're at the 15th, right? Yeah. So we're at 13 days. Ago. 13 days. And I, you know, I always say that, you know, if everything's good with soil temperatures and everything else, 12 days is like the optimal. And it's funny, the brassicas tend to grow faster than the lettuces. So I usually start with the brassicas <coughs> in case I won't get them all done today. And then again, this, you know, specific tool. Is that the butter knife this time? <laughs> the butter knife, yep. So we'll go ahead and put that in there. And the first one getting out is kind of tough because they're squeezed in there pretty good, but. See now, I didn't get all um, four of these Germany, or five, so there's only four there. So that would have saved the soil blocks. And I see these are a little dry, and then the roots are pretty much out, but a lot of times, you know, I try to get them so they all go in the hole, but even if they're sitting on top, they're fine. And they fit in almost perfect. I think these are kohlrabis, yeah. And look at how much root. So that didn't air prune too well. <coughs> oh well, what they did is, sideways they did, but what they did is they hit the bottom of the tray mm. and go like that. That's what I said um, Matt. And I used to put like a paper bag in there, but again when I was having so much problem with this, I thought there might have been some glue in the bag that was making them not do so good. But I'm seeing these need a little bit of water. And that, people always ask about how do you water them? <coughs> You know, people, and I remember everybody's wanting to miss them because they're worried they'll fall apart. But if you get a really good watering can with a fine rose, you just do this. <clears throat> Nothing washed and they got soaked. Because if you miss them, they, they got surface tension um, and they won't absorb. Hmm. What's the time span from the mini to this block before you can plant the two inch? In the ground, it's, so it's about the same thing, about 12 days, maybe okay. 14, if everything's good with temperatures and stuff. Um, yeah, and I'm usually starting to harvest, you know, at six weeks, because they've been in the ground two weeks. Um, uh, so that's kind of a weak one, so I won't plant that. And really, that's all there is to it. You just got to do it many times. Practice makes perfect, huh? Mm -hmm. Now these were on the porch. Do they move to the wall? Yep. Okay. Because um, you know, I really kept them out. Normally, I would put them in and out. These in these uh, mini trays every day, but it got so hot the last couple of days, I just left them in here. It stays a little cooler, believe it or not, in the house. I mean, in the porch here. Um, and I can monitor them a little better, but these will go directly to the wall. So, you know, I try to do 10 of every variety, but a lot of times, like, so out of those um, 40, I had three that didn't come up. So, I mean, that's pretty good germination, but what I'll do then is just pick some kind of, something that's very different than the brassica, so here I'll put a lettuce in there, just to, so I don't lose variety, because if I put another brassica in there when I'm planting them out, I might not know exactly what they are, so I'll just. This thing sticks out like a sore yeah. thumb. Yeah. And then when I'm planting, when I'm you know doing my color palette, I'll just be able to see that this is a you know purple lettuce. And see there, you can see the double plant. Oops. And, you know, if we ever do a harvesting video, you'll see when that one's, you know, six inches tall, I'll just cut that off and put it in the greens mix and the other one continues on. And then they go out to full sun. And then these will get watered, you know, pretty much daily with uh, filtered um, city water. But it's amazing, you know, these will not go through any transplant shock. They won't wilt or nothing, even in full sun. I don't know what, I think, you know, I think it's just uh, the process that allows that. <coughs> so how long you been doing these soil blocks for, Jim? Gotta be 
at least 11 years. And you've tried all different methods. I mean, this is the one that you found that... Yeah, especially when I had it tuned in at first. And I had, like I said, I had the two years here with a well water trying to water these, and that was different. But they're exceptional seedlings. You know, they don't even pause when you put them in the ground. It, it's all timing, too, just like any kind of uh, seedling that you don't want to let it get too big. Um, but if you time everything right, it just doesn't stop. It rocks. And, you know, sometimes when everything's right, within three days, there'll be roots coming down the outside of these big blocks. Wow. That's when everything's perfect. You know, when, and I, it got close to that the last seeding I did. <coughs> so. so. The only time you move these if there's a heavy rain. Yep. That's it. Well, you actually, what I do is <coughs> I've got some polycarbonate sheets. And what I do is I put them over the top because it, <coughs> it doesn't squish them down. And that way I can leave them out here. But when they get a little taller, I can't do that. So I actually rush them in there if I know I got a big storm coming. I watch radar and. Okay. And I don't really worry about cold. <coughs> These are, I've seen these many times go through a pretty heavy frost and not have a problem. No issues. Yeah. Because no. I remember I used to do them on a carport roof in my other place. And I remember one morning it was just white everywhere. And even on the car, you know how car, you know roofs sometimes have that frost yeah. first? They were, and I just, they just, you know, it thawed out and they were fine. <laughs> All right, Jim. Awesome. We knocked out a soil block video. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Anytime. They've been waiting for this one. <laughs> well, now they shouldn't be. Well, there'll be more questions anyway, but at least they got something to go with. All right, guys, so finally got you that soil block video with Jim Povaleski. I think this is a really awesome method for starting seedlings. Definitely check it out. I'll have links in the description down below for the soil blocker, the mix, uh, links to Elliot Coleman, the whole nine yards. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't pounded that bell yet and subscribe, please go ahead and do so. Most importantly, pound dirt.